Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. I'm here with Brett LaSala. Today we're gonna to assemble a MK5 B58 super engine. So most of you are aware that the MK5 Supra is a BMW partner program with Toyota. So that means the engine that's in the MK5 Supra is just a BMW B58, which is an evolution of their inline six engine. It's a pretty neat engine. It's got variable cams, makes a lot of average power. However, it's a pretty large departure from what I'm used to because my background is heavy into American engines and Japanese engines. Fortunately for us, Brett LaSala has 15 years of experience in the German car field and I've measured it up and now Brett can go ahead and screw this end together with his existing knowledge of the German car engineering. So before I started at Real Street, I worked for Mercedes-Benz AMG. Uh, I was a master technician there, uh, 15 years as Jay said. Did a lot of engine repair, a lot of engine diagnosis and training. Uh, this BMW engine will have a lot of the same technology and approach um, to assembly as the Mercedes engines. So um, I'll be very familiar with the processes for the cylinder head timing and things of that nature. So being a turbocharged engine, this engine had suffered a head gasket failure. And while the engine was part to change the head gasket, customer wanted to go ahead and upgrade the pistons and rods. So now we've got the engine completely apart. We've got the deck of the block decked so it's a flat fresh machine surface. We've got the cylinder head decked, fresh flat machine surface, and Brett can go ahead and reassemble this engine to go back to the customer. As far as the components we're gonna use for this build, we've selected a ARP main stud kit that's gonna be holding a set of King bearings that are gonna be on both the crankshaft mains and the crankshaft rod bearings. We're gonna use a Brian Crower H-beam connecting rod and a CP piston. We're gonna hold that head in place with an ARP head stud kit and a Kometic head gasket. So this will be an engine that's kind of fortified or forged and ready for more boost and more power. As far as the bearing clearances on this engine, the crankshaft has around two thousandths of vertical oil clearance and the connecting rods are just over two and a half thousandths vertical oil clearance. Really similar to the clearances that the engine had when it came apart because we measured that stuff as kind of a baseline. Uh, if you're working on an engine that you don't know what to do with bearing clearance and the engine bearings look good, it's best to start off around where they were already living. As far as the um, coating on the bearing, this engine did have a coated rod bearing from the factory because of the auto start feature. So we went ahead and continued that with the King coated bearing.
What was your favorite German engine? Uh, it's probably the 156 engine, which was the 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V8 that came in the AMGs um, from 08 to I think like 15 or so that engine ran. But uh, mainly because I got to be one of the first people to um, build one or assemble one. We had uh, oil consumption issues with the engine the first year or so of production. Um, the cylinders were too slippery. They had a spray in liner that was really low friction to promote NA horsepower. Okay. And um, if they didn't get the ring seal, basically during break-in of the engine, uh, they would just drink oil. How much oil? Uh, two quarts, a thousand miles. Whoa. Yeah, that's excessive. Yeah. So um, I got to kind of be involved with the first diagnosis of why this was happening because a lot of problems happen in the States aren't happening in Germany because, because of the fuel? fuel, climate, um, a lot of things. So then the U.S. has all these problems and they're like, you guys are the problems. <laughs> so we have to kind of diagnose them over here with our U.S. Uh, engineers that work for actual Mercedes, not for the dealership. So they're at the dealership um, kind of helping you diagnose the problem. And it's not just for you, it's going to be for all of the engines at that point. And then information gets released on the engine, like look for this if you have this kind of problem. Um, so I got to put pistons and rings in one of the very early versions of that engine. And I just remember because there was no work instructions. Uh, we had some documents sent over from Germany that was all in German. And the engine was really expensive and new to us at the time because it came in, you know, it was really high end. Like this was the latest technology in 2008 was pretty high end. And the How cylinder, expensive was the engine? Uh, I think the whole engine, if you had to buy one from Mercedes, was 100,000, which Ooh. the car was barely that much money. So it's, <laughs> it was uh, um, a big feat to work on it because if you did something wrong or messed something up, I think the cylinder block was, was uh, 60,000. So it was uh, a little uh, nervous at first doing that one and then uh, kind of came partial out of the engine and then after you do a few of them everything you know becomes more simple right. and uh, you know I was the 156 guy so we were putting pistons in them a lot at that point. Right on. Did they, uh, what was the fix? Well uh, they had a different piston ring. So we got pistons came with the rings on them ready to go. Uh, we took the engine apart, slid it in, and ran it, and that was it. Was fixed. So it was uh, the increased tension. Uh, it was either, yeah. They didn't actually. A lot of times they don't tell you the very final fix. So you know you're kind of looking at it, trying to determine, okay, what they what they change. Uh, you know, was it the tension? Was it the material? But basically, um, it was just too slippery the first go around. That's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people don't realize that um, a lot of OEM cars have legitimate problems. Yeah. And uh, you may buy one and you may figure it out the hard way, but um, even the OEMs are still going through, especially in cylinder bore finish, because what they want, what they want at a low mileage engine, um, as far as the uh, mean standard emissions of that particular engine, it may not work very well at all at 30 or 40,000 miles. So there's a lot of new cars that are plagued with consumption because of the cylinder bore finish and how well it performs at zero to no miles versus somewhere. Yeah, and the fuel thing was a, a big issue with a, a lot of the Mercedes stuff with misfire, detonation, or oil consumption because the, the fuel in Europe is just so much better than our fuel. Yeah. So then, you know, they would produce stuff, engineer stuff, and then when it came over here, they'd um, get some unique problems. Yeah, no, I've, I've worked with customers um, around the world that they have uh, really terrible fuel, you know, like really terrible fuel and you see it in the, um, in the bore wear, they just, the engines, you know, they, they cannot survive, you know, the, they cannot survive in some areas just based off of how poor the fuel quality is. That's pretty awesome. What, what did that engine make? That's a 500 horsepower engine? Yeah, it was it, towards the end of his run, it was up around 500. And then they made a couple variants of it that went into um, the SLS, the Goldwing car. Yep. That was a dry sump version, had the GAS, like gas operated spring. The, the cylinders were sealed side to side. So as the piston came down, the, the air pressure helped push the other piston up. Oh, wow. And a yeah, lot of neat things. Neat I think trick. that one made almost 550 yeah. or so and had a dual throttle body plenum intake with these long runners over the valve covers. It was pretty neat. That's awesome. And then turbochargers took over and something, 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 <laughs> yeah. turbochargers. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably guilty of uh, just being a little bit too American because the Audi, BMW, Mercedes, their hot rod programs have always been very impressive. They really have made some uh, really powerful engines over the years.
we went to install the oil pump, we noticed that it was making contact with the ARP main stud. Uh, we went ahead and clearanced that. This is a common issue in installing aftermarket parts uh, into a factory engine. The, all the factory parts were made designed to go together. So when you introduce, introduce aftermarket parts, sometimes you'll run into issues like this.
So the engine's back together and we have a pretty simple setup, you know, forged pistons, forged rods, got some valve springs, some aftermarket camshafts. Uh, the bottom end was not a complex piece at all. The top end uses some special service tools. Brett, anything with the special service tools or the valve train or differences between this engine and the Mercedes engine? Uh, so the timing procedure was um, pretty much the same. The tools are different. They're going to be all unique to this engine specifically, and you're going to want to use BMW tools. A couple aftermarket companies that are pretty good. Um, but the procedure for the timing is, is different than any other style of engine, so um, it's pretty unique if you're not familiar with it to know how to do that. So the B58 and the MK5 Supra has been on the scene for a few years now. Uh, there was some initial pushback because it's not a Supra. I'd like to hear in the comments section of how you guys have worked through that. Is there a higher level acceptance for this vehicle now that it's proven to be uh, not only a fun car, but a very fast car? So we'll see you in the comments. Thanks. Have a good day.